describing speed with graphs. In this video we're going to interpret distance versus time graphs and use them to describe the motion of an object. We're going to relate the slope of a distance time graph to speed and finally we're going to see how a distance versus time graph indicates the direction of the motion of an object. So a graph is a visual way of depicting data. Here I have a graph depicting the motion of a car. We have what appears to be three data points. On the y-axis we have distance and we have um, the units of distance and on the x-axis we have time and the units of time in hours. Now you notice that um, everything about the graph is, is clear to us. We have a title, we have numbers on the axes, we have the axes labeled, and we have the units on the axes. So all graphs should include all of those elements. Now during any time interval we see that the car is moving at 30 miles per hour. Now how do we know this? Well, what we could do, the time interval would be between 0 and 1 second, between 1 and or 0 and 1 hours, between 1 and 2 hours, and between 2 and 3 hours. Those are all uh, time intervals. So if we consider the time interval between 0 and 1 hours, what we could do is we calc can calculate the speed of that time interval, and we know that between 0 and 1, the car goes from 0 to 30 miles. So the change in distance divided by the change in time would be 30 minus 0 divided by 1 minus 0. It works out to 30 miles per hour. Now if we select a different time interval, for example, between um, the second hour and the third hour, um, and calculate the distance, uh, the change in the distance, so between the second and third hour, we went from 60 to 90 miles away from the starting point. So the change in distance would be 90 minus 60 and the change in time would be uh, 3 hours minus 2 hours. And we see we arrive at the same answer of 30 miles per hour. So as you can see, the, ch the uh, motion of the car seems to follow a consistent pattern um, that, that in all the intervals the speed happens to be 30 miles per hour. So we say that the car is moving at a constant speed. Um, and uh, the way we calculated the speed, you may have noticed that speed actually is equal to the slope of a distance versus time graph. So always remember that. Speed is the slope of the distance versus time graph. If we did the same calculation just using the slope approach, slope is rise divided by run, if we take the interval between 1 and 3 hours, so that entire section there, uh, we know uh, at 1 hour we're at 30, and at 3 hours we are at 90. So 90 minus 30 divided by 3 minus 1 is equal to 30, a slope of 30, so 30 miles an hour. And if we do the same calculation taking the speed approach, speed is distance divided by time, and we, um, we start out at 30, end up at 90, so 90 minus 30, that would be the change in position, um, divided by the change in time, and that works out to 30 miles per hour also. So now let's have a look at interpreting velocity graphs. Now as you can see, we can, the graphs can take many different shapes. Um, and I've selected a, um, a handful to give you an idea how to interpret each one of those shapes. So graph A, we see that the distance versus time graph, we have a horizontal line. Um, so that uh, shows us that the object is always at the same distance away from the uh, zero point. And what we'll do is we'll add, emphasize that, we'll add a zero there at zero time. Um, so perhaps the object is at 5 meters away, and it's always at 5 meters away. So it's not moving. The slope is equal to zero, so therefore the velocity uh, and the speed would also equal to zero. Remember, velocity is speed and direction. Uh, speed does not consider direction. If we look at, at uh, graph B, we see that we have a positive slope. Um, the object seems to be moving away from zero. It begins somewhere away from zero to, uh, to start, but then it keeps moving further away. 
So it's moving at a constant velocity and the slope is constant, um, like the, the example I showed you earlier. And I just want to emphasize, in this case, I'm talking about velocity uh, because we're considering direction, that the object is moving away from zero as opposed to moving towards, the, uh, towards zero. In this third example, I have three different um, lines on the same uh, set of axes, um, say object K, object L, and object M. And when we, we set up three lines, we can compare their speeds. We, I don't even have to put numbers on the axes. We can just look at the relative slopes. So K is considered to be the fastest because the slope is the greatest. And M is the slowest of the three because the slope is the smallest. Now D, you'll notice that um, the slope on this line is negative. It's moving, the object seems to be moving towards our zero point, wherever we've established that reference point. Perhaps that's like the starting line and an object is moving towards the starting line. So the slope is negative, this means that the velocity is in the negative direction. It does not, um, negative velocity does not mean that you're moving slower than zero. You, you cannot move slower than zero, um, but you can move in the negative direction. So the negative slope refers to direction. In graph D, the person is moving in the opposite direction depicted in graph B. Now graph B, just bring that back up. And as you can see, graph B, positive slope, graph D, negative slope. Now graph E, we see that the object, seem, the, the, the slope of the line is ever increasing. We see that because it's a curve. So slope is changing, and that means that the speed is changing. The way we, we uh, establish that the slope is changing is we can put marks on the line. I've done that, E, F, and G, and you see that the slope of the line is ever increasing. And the way we do that is we draw the dot, we draw a tangent line, and take the slope of the tangent line right at that point, and that will give us the instantaneous speed at point E or the instantaneous speed at point F and the instantaneous speed at point G. So the object is speeding up. So we see that the speed of, uh, at point G is greater than the speed at point F and that's greater than the speed of point E. So as we can see that the object seems to be moving away from, from position zero. So in this graph the person is moving away. So in this case the person is speeding up and speeding up, when I say speeding up, we're talking about uh, acceleration. The object is accelerating. So to check your understanding, I have two questions for you to consider. If a distance versus time graph shows a straight inclined line, what does the line represent? So I'd like you to draw that graph and then answer that question in your notebook. And the second question for you to consider, to verify if you understand this video, uh, I want you to sketch a graph of a person slowing down and moving away. So as you consider question two, think of what you saw in this particular graph and that should help you.